This is a shaft type aerator with an aspirator on the end for distribution and mixing of the oxygen in the, into the sewage water. Now, generally speaking, if, if you get one in for repair, obviously it's a new one, but you get one in for repair, these rubbers will be worn you know, from vibrating on the concrete and stuff. And you want to make sure the brackets are in good shape and replace them if they need to be. And there's, there's a hole in the center of the shaft that goes through the motor, down the counter shaft, down the shaft, the stainless shaft that goes in the water, and then distributes the air out the aspirator. So there's where your air bubbles come from. Over time, you'll get uh, some blockage in there. So anytime you go out to service it, get you a, a long handled brush that you can run down through that tube and clean it out real good. And to do that, this thing has left hand threads. So you can just unscrew the aspirator off the end and set it to the side. And, uh, and go ahead and run that long brush through the tube and clean it out real good. Don't use a bunch of water and stuff like that, but pull it through there until it's good and clean and you can tell that, that it's wide open down through there. Otherwise, it would just be spinning but putting no oxygen into the sewage water. So you wanna be sure that you're doing the job you're set out to do. So get it all cleaned up good. Make sure there's hair and stuff off the shaft. These shafts are, are a high grade stainless steel but that hair will get up on there and it'll cause it to trip the breaker or give you trouble uh, with it. So there's a safety breaker that is in the control panel for these that keep it from burning up the motor. So if it gets a high amp situation like that where there's a bunch of debris on there, it'll trip that breaker and you wanna get that cleaned off of there. So assuming we already have it cleaned up, we can just go ahead and screw this back on there. And what you have to be careful about with these, that stainless shaft, even though it's a really hard shaft and good stainless, they bend easy. It doesn't take much to bend them. And if you get one out of, out of uh, balance, it takes the bearings out in the motor. And that's probably one of the, that or high sewage backup on the motor is probably the two main things that take them out. The life of the motor is how straight this shaft is because it works on the bearings. So just be sure it's, it's good and straight. And when you're assembling one as a new one or reassembling it, generally speaking, most manufacturers have an, a, a line that you match up with, both the, uh, on the motor and on the counter shaft. And you match that up because it's been balanced at the factory. You don't want to over tighten it, because if you over tighten it, then you throw it out of kilter. So just a little bit of snugness you don't need to overdo it, just an Allen wrench, a little bit of snugness, it'll stay in place for you. I'd recommend that if you're gonna be pulling that shaft off, you'd replace the bearings or whatever, I would go ahead and uh, put some anti-seize on the shaft and the inside of this counter shaft so that you can disassemble it easier later. And there's a number of ways to get them off of there. And then just tighten everything up tight, but don't overdo it. Now what you wanna do is make sure the shaft's in balance. In the field situation, you just need something that you can stand upright and you spin this thing easily. Obviously everything's unplugged and you're not hooked up to anything. And you spin it and just be sure that it's in balance. If it's out of balance, there's a couple ways you can do it. Find a spot where it rubs up against, put that to the bottom, and just gently pull up on it until you get it straight. But it needs to be perfectly straight. If, uh, if it's out of balance, it will, uh, it will not last very long. It'll take the bearings right out of the motor. The other thing you want to look for on the cord, if this thing's been vibrating around in there because there's been debris on it or the shaft is out of balance, on the cord, quite frequently, you'll see wear spots where there's a bare wire showing. You want to go ahead and replace that cord if you have a bare wire. Same way on the other end where you're plugging it in inside of the riser. So then you got it all done, you put it back together, you want to plug it in, you want to check your amp draw, make sure it's within nameplate amperage then you can go put it back in the tank. When you do that, be sure these brackets are adjusted. You can adjust them with a crescent wrench or whatever to fit the riser snugly because each riser is just a little bit different based on how old the mold is or how good the caster is. And just be sure they fit in there snugly and these are sitting flat on the top of the riser when they're in there and you'll be in pretty good shape. 
check your uh, plug in coming from the house and, and if the wires have any uh, bad spots on them, go ahead and replace that wire coming through that riser as well. Make sure your proper amperage coming from the house. And the other thing that's really important with these is a proper size breaker for the motor. So if you hook this up without a control panel directly to a 15 or 20 amp breaker in the house panel, you will burn this motor up and you'll ruin it because as it builds up some hair on here or debris, it pulls more amps than the motor's manufactured to withstand and it'll burn it up. So because you're putting in a replacement unit or replacing one that's there, you need to figure out what caused it to go bad and be certain that you have the proper size mini breaker in that control panel for the, for the uh, unit that you're replacing.